Well, let's uh, get fresh perspective on the situation in Kaduna State now. Uh, we have joining us from New York security analyst Mukta Dan Eyan. Thank you, Mukta, for joining us again on TVC News. So uh, we hear that there's been yet Thanks another <coughs> modification to the curfew in Kaduna following the deadly crisis that erupted recently. Uh, what's your uh, overview or your expectation now of the situation there? How do you think uh, the government is faring in its intervention? I think the governor is doing as good a job as can be expected. Unfortunately, what a lot of people don't seem to understand is that the situation in Kaduna goes back decades. It's not um, a new dynamic. It's not a new development. It's one that has existed. And no matter who is in uh, the governor's uh, seat in that state, these things are bound to happen. I think the current governor has uh, done as good a job as uh, anyone. In fact, in many ways, I think it's uh, been contained better than uh, many would expect. In fact, I'd say it's, uh, the response is even better than what we had uh, when we had uh, military administrations in place. Definitely the loss of lives uh, is not the best. We've lost a lot of people, but compared to uh, the riots of the 80s and 90s, I think it, it, it's not as bad as it used to be. And talking about security in uh, Kaduna, this isn't the first time, as usual, it has happened and it keeps recurring. And there's reason for this uh, relaxed curfew, we understand, was because one of the traditional rulers was killed, I mean, in, reimposed after it was, was relaxed yes. initially because the traditional ruler was killed. Now, do you think perhaps that security can be well managed in Kaduna with this new intervention by the state government? Well managed is a relative term. I think it's been managed as well as it could be, uh, other than literally having a 24-hour curfew placed indefinitely. I am not quite certain that there is anything more that, that, that can be done, because unfortunately the tensions are there beneath the surface, and uh, I, I think in the foreseeable future they will still be there. And that's because the dynamic of uh, Kaduna State is unique. You know, in the north, you have uh, traditionally uh, Hausa people, uh, most of whom are of the Muslim faith. In southern Kaduna, you have people who used to be animists, but have now become mostly Christians. And uh, those groups are, there are about 30 different ethnic groups in that area. And unfortunately, those groups believe that the uh, nor the northern Kaduna people, the Hausa people who practice Islam, have been trying to impose their socio-economic norms on the southern part. And uh, those people resent it and, uh, you know, agitators within uh, uh, the body politic uh, find a way to always uh, uh, make those people go from uh, just letting the tension simmer to actually uh, engaging in violence. So it's not something that can just be uh, switched off, uh, you know due to government intervention. So are you saying, sorry, are you saying that you, you, there are some concerns or some fears that, you know, will continually have a crisis in Kaduna? I think, unfortunately, yes. I mean, I will say that the only solution is literally dividing Kaduna into two states. I mean, the people of the South have been agitating for their state for, for ages. Uh, it hasn't come to them because, again, they believe that their culture and tradition is very different from that of the people of Northern Kaduna but the challenge is in the south, in the southern part of Kaduna, most uh, commercial activities, most uh, uh, government activities are controlled by people who are perceived as being agents of the north. Uh, you know, uh, the first riot actually took place in 1942. By talking of close to 100 years ago in uh, the Zango Kataf area, where the uh, people there believe that uh, the Hausa people were uh, imposing themselves on them and uh, they rioted, and it's happened ever since then numerous times. Uh, you know, during the, the re regime of Babangida, it happened in 1987, happened in 92, and so on and so forth. So now, as it's at this point, it's intergenerational. Uh, those people are, for lack of a better term, predisposed to seeing uh, Northern Kaduna as the enemy, even though I personally don't think it is. All right, Mukhtar. I'm afraid we'll have to rest at this point now on this issue. Thank you, Mukhtar Dan Iyan, for speaking with us on TVC no News. No problem.